Good morning. It's it's good to see you this morning. Um, Announcements. Uh, How do I put this? So for for a lot, I decided to do um, a series of going through America's favorite spiritual songs. You might know them as hymns, but just to be on the safe side, I'm calling them spiritual songs. So, um, the, the midweek services will be held on, on t- Tuesdays, Tuesday nights at 7. Um, that way, uh, everything's all recorded and ready to go for anyone who wants to view it later in the week. So, it doesn't get too late too quick. And also, I'll be doing a one-minute uh, Facebook video each day as a devotional for each hymn. So that, that's quick, hopefully short and sweet, but also uh, I'll teach you a little something about each hymn that you may have not known before. I already have a, a list of uh, 22 hymns that I, I've done a little research on, and I'm looking for 40, but I just want to see if, if there's, after looking at the list, noticing there's a, a few others that you would like to add. I know, Barbara, you probably have a whole bunch you'd like to add. But, <laughs> but um, whoever notes anything down, I'll definitely take it into consideration and, and try to work it in. And as for right now, that's all I have. Um, anything else? I, th- I think we'll... Correct. Yeah. You got it's upside down. The second nine is upside down. So let's go ahead and, and stand and begin with, with that opening hymn, 966. Now, before you, Lord, we bow. There's, there's not a choir in this one. That's the only one. But I'll, I'll join along with y'all. There's it. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Give you to my prayer, O oh God. And do not hide my prayer for mercy. Holy and gracious God, I confess I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sins are known, and I'm ashamed, but some are known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Our Heavenly Father is merciful. He has forgiven you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the scripture reading. The Old Testament lesson comes to us from Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes 
to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them, they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. For if I, Paul, preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do not do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if I do this not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. Those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. Not being outside the law, but under the law of Christ. That might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak. That I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people. That by means, I might have saved some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So to run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a per perishable wreath but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. And immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever. And immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her. And she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. You may be seated as we sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, hymn number 770.
O Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Let me ask you, what do you do when life gets busy? Maybe it depends. Depends on the personality. Some work harder to clear that to-do list. Some organize and prioritize their list so that they can get more done in less time. Others just keep on cruising at the same speed. Whatever gets done, gets done. What doesn't get done is just simply going to have to wait. Jesus had a busy day. It began preaching and casting out demons in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Now he's brought to Simon's house, which is also in Capernaum. Jesus is not only with Simon, but with his other disciples. Andrew, James, and John, they are told about Simon's mother-in-law. She is ill with a fever. Then Jesus comes and takes her by the hand and lifts her up. And then the fever leaves her. How is she now? She is so well that she begins serving her guests. She responds by showing gratitude and humility to Jesus and his disciples. It is now evening at sundown. For the Jews, the Sabbath day is over. The day of rest is over. And the people are now traveling to tell others what they have seen. The word gets around about Jesus. All who are sick or oppressed by demons can be healed by Jesus. Now those who want to see Jesus are with him. Those who want to be healed and restored by Jesus are now gathered around him at Peter's house. And Jesus restores them. Interestingly, the demons who were present before Jesus were not permitted to speak. Jesus wouldn't let them. He wouldn't let them interfere with his three your ministry plan as given by his father. Then Jesus, even after having a full day, wakes up early in the morning. It is so early that it is still dark. He goes to a desolate place. He prays. What do you think he prays for? Our scripture for this scene doesn't say. As we have seen, he doesn't seem to be lacking in anything. I'm sure we ourselves could identify with the crowds in this passage a whole lot more. The crowds struggle. They each each person in that crowd has a need. Some illness that's holding them down, and for some of them, it's life-threatening. As each of us struggle to get through this world that is cursed with sin, we want to see God's power at work. We want to see Jesus answer our prayer requests. 
how do you handle prayer? I think praying is something we all could do more of, including myself. However, when we have a prayer list, we can get tired of praying. We can get tired of God not answering the prayer. We can get tired of making the same request over and over. We can also get tired of having such a long prayer list. The more we recognize the needs out in this world, the more we recognize how much there is to pray for. Speaking of needs, there is specifically the need of getting through a busy day. We can get so busy with our lives that we don't have time to pray. And sometimes we would rather be just doing something else with our time. It's just not where our heart is at. As we wrestle with our sinful nature, I'm sure many times we want to just not pray. Galatians 5.17 says, The desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for they are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Satan would be happy if we didn't pray to our Father in heaven, wouldn't he? There are all kinds of reasons why we don't want to pray. But there are even more reasons why we should. When we pray, God listens. Though he may not answer our prayers, he listens to them. That brings us to talk to him to have a relationship with him, to listen how he wants us to respond. And he does answer them. And he can even answer our prayers in ways we would never expect. Why did Jesus pray? Many scholars think that he was seeking guidance from his father. What is he supposed to to do next? Is he supposed to stay and be with the people in Capernaum? Or is he supposed to go somewhere else? Simon and those who are searching for Jesus find him. They say, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replies, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. Why did Jesus come? To preach to the next towns. So Jesus goes out throughout the region of Galilee and preaches in the synagogues and casts out demons. What seems to be Jesus' primary purpose here? Is it to cast out demons? Is it to heal everyone? Or is it to preach to preach with authority, to reveal to the people that the rule and reign of God is here with Jesus. 
that God's will is being carried out. I'm sure Jesus would have enjoyed spending more time with the people in the town of Capernaum. Talking to the people there, enjoying some time of fellowship, and healing them in body, soul, and mind. But he did what he came to do. He brought faith to the community, the belief and following of Jesus Christ. Knowing where God wants us to go isn't always clear. And it isn't always easy either. Jesus knew where God's plan was eventually going to take him. This prayer and the darkness would take him to another prayer in the darkness. The night before his crucifixion, Jesus said to his disciples, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Then Jesus goes to his father, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. And Jesus continued to pray to his father. He prayed up to the point where his time had come. His time had come. He returned to his disciples. They watched him get arrested. And this arrest leads him to be crucified. This was Jesus' greatest priority. To let his death defeat the darkness that you and I cannot escape on our own. But we live as children of God seeking God's will. Our sin will take us into death. But because we are children of God, death won't be the end for us. Our prayer is to be with Jesus. And he has risen from the dead and is living with his Father in heaven. And we too, like him, will rise from our death. Jesus has great power. He has power over illness, demons, sin, death, and the devil. And whoever believes in Jesus and is baptized in his name shall not perish. They will have everlasting life in his eternal kingdom. even if our prayers don't get answered by Jesus. By the way, we would hope things would work out. It's going to be okay. If God is good, then he wants what is good for us. And sometimes he will do something that we don't understand. But God has been faithful to his people as shown in the scriptures. And he is faithful to us. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes for the Kansas City Chiefs enjoys sharing his faith. And so does Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott at one time was suffering from an ankle fracture. And while he was healing, 
He said, I'm excited for God's purpose and plan. Despite his setback, he says he's trusting in God. My faith is doubled down more than ever, and I'm thankful that he's my Savior and he guides me in life. Back in 2013, his mother died to cancer. And at another time, his brother died to suicide. He said, I know I'm very fortunate and blessed. And other people have it much worse. He also says, it's important to be just transparent about your mental health. That even in situations for him, emotions can overcome you if you don't do something about it. The Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, also knows the dynamics of having a relationship with the Lord. He knows that he's not just putting on a show for the Chiefs' kingdom. He is also playing for God's kingdom. He says, obviously, I want to win every game, but I'm glorifying him with every single time I'm out there. His walk with Jesus Christ has shaped him to the man who he is today. The star player that is admired by many. Jesus followed God's will when even we ourselves could not. So then let us follow Jesus' example. Seeking to, embracing, seeking to embrace our relationship with our Father in heaven through prayer. To take time aside and seek guidance of where he wants us to go. And as we go out and live our lives, he will continue to point us where he wants us to go. God hears us, and he knows our weakness, and he knows our need. And even in the end, we will be strengthened. As said with these words from Isaiah, The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Amen. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offering.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, give joy to your servants on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your means many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined for and self-controlled in their duties and run in their course in this life and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, ready to receive eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations. You hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land and produce and industry and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Your son is the great physician of body and soul, and all who have any kind of disease or ill. Today we bring before you those in need, as we name them silently in our hearts. Heal them and renew them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts and tithes that are brought to you today. Let them be used to proclaim your love and everlasting promises in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.